Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. I want to uh, touch on one of my favorite topics, low brain blood pressure again. And I, I want to try to tell it slightly differently in, in showing kind of how tobacco uh, um, addiction, uh, you know, ADD, and then some of these behaviors in autism are all actually reactions to the same problem we have in our our central nervous system so here's some cool image i don't know who did it um, but it's pretty interesting what they can do nowadays and basically you know just to emphasize you've got this heart you've got these blood vessels you see down here from the legs coming up these large rather large vessels in the in the upper arms here and one of the primary things they do is to get oxygen from the lungs and push that blood into the brain, okay? The number one job of your body is to keep the brain alive, all right? And that's, this is the, the crux of it all. And the number one ingredient you need is you need oxygen because your neurons only have one second of spare oxygen. Glucose, they can go a little bit longer without glucose, not much, but, uh, it's a close second, but oxygen clearly is the number one thing they're going to need. And this complex uh, cardiovascular system, the pulmonary system, is regulated by your autonomic nervous system. Now, in the way you think of this, you think of this as the automatic nervous system. And this graphic uh, shows we have what we call two branches, the sympathetic and parasympathetic. In terms of organ function, it's uh, very mechanical. Like this one will uh, side dilate your pupils when it's dark out, and this one dilates your pupils when it's sunny. Uh, and they here they go through talk about all these different parts of the body. And down here is an important one: peripheral vasoconstriction. And what that means is squeezing on the blood vessels. Okay. And what's that do? That pushes blood up to your brain. This side is also important increases your heart rate and the contractility of your heart what's that do that's the your hydraulic pump for your brain okay very important this part of the brain the autonomics controls hormones metabolism immune system your emotions it's regulating everything but here we're going to just talk about the uh, uh, the blood pressure system so Here's my not so fancy graphics, okay? Um, we've got somebody lying down and we're gonna say their blood pressure is 140 over 80 with a pulse of 80. And when that person stands up, gravity is trying to take blood from your head and drive it to your feet. So again, the autonomic nervous system is gonna have some vasoconstriction in the blood vessels. The heart's gonna beat, beat maybe a little faster. Or really, uh, it's just more vigorously and to maintain your blood pressure in your brain 140 over 80 pulse of 80 okay so that's normal now when you get a concussion or a concussion like injury now a concussion is the way we talk about it, physical injury to the brain you snap some neurons you don't bleed in the brain so your cat scan's normal and uh, you'll have symptoms for a couple days so that's basically a concussion. We are designed to completely recover that if everything's working right. And that, but unfortunately, if you see any of my other, other videos, inflammation's preventing that from happening. We'll get to that later. And, uh, but also inflammation. So like the inflammatory stress from a surgery or a big fracture will damage neurons in your brain, okay? So you, inflammation gives you a concussion-like damage. Uh, intense emotions can give you a, uh, a concussion-like damage in the brain. And in children with autism, uh, there is some suspicion now, some data, that the propionic acid that's leaking into their bloodstream might give a chemical injury to the brain. All right? So this is normal. Now, but when you do get an injury, what happens? So when you're flat, no gravity, you're able to keep your blood pressure, 140 over 80 into the brain. But now against gravity, it's not working quite as well. You have low blood pressure up in the brain. 
and your pulse might be increased. And that's because that's your hydraulic pump. The body's trying to compensate. Okay? That's why your heart rapid heart rate is up. And so that's what that's what will happen. And when you have this, this so the symptoms people get in the brain is there's not enough oxygen. They can't think, they can't focus, they can't concentrate, they're kind of tired a lot. Um, it may be hard to wake up when they first get out of bed and that gravity, they're having gravity problems right away. Um, it can make you hungry for like salt and sugar. It can make people really thirsty. Uh, and uh, it will, the blood will pool in your legs. So people will, you know, their legs will bounce or they're, they've just got to be up moving around. Uh, you and children, it's hyperactivity. Those things all will drive blood pressure. Okay, and that's bodies trying to get pressure, uh, a reaction to the low pressure in the brain. Now, the main receptors are what we call nicotinic or nicotine receptors. Okay, back in the 40s, they were doing physiology studies. They take like muscle from like a little rabbit and squirt different things in the muscle, and they realized when they uh, squirted in nicotine, the blood vessels would constrict, get tighter. And so they started working. They called these nicotinic receptors. And these receptors will have effects on how vigorously and how fast your heart pumps and primarily how tight your blood vessels are. All right. Um, they could also cause release of norepinephrine. And uh, that is your fight or flight hormone. All right, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, when you stand up and you know you need this pressure, it's through this triggering of these nicotinic receptors. Now, when you get an injury, you can't trigger these well, and so your pressure is low. Okay, um, I should add, like if you have ADD and you're on Adderall or Ritalin, it's triggering these receptors, it's pushing blood to your head. Okay. Now those drugs also penetrate the brain and stimulate it, but uh, they will trigger these receptors. So does uh, there's a drug I use called Minadrin will trigger these receptors. And the nice thing about Minadrin is it doesn't get in the brain, so you don't have brain symptoms. Okay, adverse effects. It won't like suppress your hunger or overstimulate you, or, you know, make you angry, stuff like that. Now, here we are. Um, this is what nicotine does, okay? So you got somebody who's injured, so here they are. They've got lowish blood pressure, high pulse when they're upright. When they're flat, they don't need nicotine, okay? They, they don't crave nicotine really when they're flat. They only crave it when they're upright and they have this low pressure because their nicotine triggers those receptors we were just talking about and boosts pressure to your head, okay? Now, if you live somewhere cold like Chicago, you got these people, they're out there, it's, you know, 10 below zero. They're still out there on their smoke break. Okay? And they're like, oh, Harry, boy, Harry's addicted to nicotine. It's not really addiction. Okay? Because Harry can go home at night, and when he goes to bed, he suddenly doesn't need to smoke for 10 hours. Okay? It's saying he lays in bed for 10. All right? And it's that... Harry's nicotine is boosting blood pressure to his brain. And his brain needs the oxygen when he's upright at work or just moving around in the day. For people with attention deficit disorder, your ADD meds, Adderall, Ritalin, all those, Cetera, they all boost blood pressure to your head. That's why you can think better. Okay? Now, I mentioned autism and they can have this chemical injury. Um, that's what you'll see. Their behaviors. So they, most autistic kids really, they've got really bad blood pressure in the brain. It's really low. This has been documented in the literature. Um, and it's just that the kids can't complain. Like, oh, I'm so light at it. I'm going to pass out. I can't focus. Like, they can't tell you any of that because they're nonverbal. All right. But what do you see? They have this incessant need to lay down. Lots of them. They want to lay down or slouch a lot. Um, or they'll hang with their head upside down. They'll do little funny things with their heads upside down to get pressure in their head. 
I have some kids that would refuse to walk and they would just army crawl around the house or roll, okay, until we got their brain to start to recover and then they could stand upright. But the, the brain is forcing them to do these behaviors so that the brain gets more oxygen. Now, other things they do, they are very hyperactive because the blood pools in the lower, your lower extremities and moving those muscles gives you blood pressure. That's the same thing with toe walking. It tightens the muscles to give you blood pressure. Okay? And they crave salt and sugar. Like, insanely sometimes. We've had kids dismantle, like, the cabinets to get to the salt shaker that's been locked away. Because the, the salt gives the brain oxygen by boosting the blood pressure. The sugar does the same. And here, norepinephrine, if it's really bad... You release norepinephrine. That'll boost blood pressure to your head. And this is where the aggression comes in and a lot of the negative behaviors. It's your norepinephrine is your fight or flight hormone. Okay? When these kids are going off half crazy and just insane and biting people or hitting their heads or they got low blood pressure in the brain. That's what's going on. Okay? And so all of this is the same problem. From the nicotine, the ADD, these kids with autism and hyperactivity and people who can't be, they're really restless. They always got to be moving. You know, if if your basic blood work from your doctor is normal and you haven't had a massive heart attack, okay, which most people know if you would have, then you have autonomic problems and you are not regulating your blood pressure correctly. Okay? And the reason for that is You've had some minor injuries, and you don't even, a lot of them you aren't even counting as injuries, like the inflammatory things or the emotional things that can happen in life. And they aren't fully being repaired, and the damage just keeps building, 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 building. Okay? It's all the same thing. All the same thing. And that's what the whole protocol is about. The Machete Protocol is designed specifically to lower blood, uh, lower inflammation to get the autonomic nervous system to recover. You don't have to do some fancy drills to get the brain to recover. You just got to lower inflammation and the brain is fully capable of fixing it on its own. Okay? I hope that helps. Just kind of a different way to look at it. And uh, other than that, everybody, have a great day. Take care now. Bye.